Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home. Hey, I'm Matt with the Code Hub. Welcome back to Coding at Home. We're gonna do some more augmented reality stuff today. Uh, today we're gonna to be playing around with one of my favorite pieces of augmented reality, and that is image anchors. Uh, we tried yesterday and our uh, feed was a little bit sketchy on old uh, Twitch, so we've decided we're gonna skip it and go straight to YouTube all the way. So here we are. So. Today we're going to be going through, uh, we're going to go back over some of the stuff we talked about yesterday. So if you were able to watch any of it, um, it might be a little bit of a refresh, but that's that's fine. It's always useful to go back through these things. So let's jump over the iPad and uh, check it out. All right. So cool. So where we were yesterday is we were actually trying to build some images to anchor our reality scene too. So when we go into Reality Composer down here, we can see I have my image anchor screen and let's let's um, start from scratch. Let's go back to the, the projects um, file here. I'm actually gonna delete this project, not tap on it, because if I tap on it, I go into it. So I'm gonna tap on it, I'm gonna delete it, and let's let's start completely from scratch. So we're going to go create a new project. We're going to choose the type of anchor we want to use. We're going to choose an image anchor. And you can see it looks a little different than our horizontal anchor um, reality scene because we've got this thing down here and we've got a hexagon shape. So over here in the Properties Inspector, if that's not up, we can tap on this button here in the, the toolbar and it'll bring it up. It's, we can see that our image anchor type is selected. We have a new item here in the Properties bar called Image Asset. We have some scene physics, just like we did before. Gravity, we can set that just like we did in the horizontal anchored reality scene. Um, but the key is gonna be picking an image asset. So let's go create an image asset to use. And in fact, let's go very quickly back here for a second. So if you missed it yesterday, or even if you didn't, uh, these images are perfect for using with, as image anchors. Uh, they're really high contrast. They've got very distinct colors. They've got the white background. So it's easy for the, the app inside um, your iPad to, to determine that, oh, actually that's the image that I'm gonna anchor my scene on. So that's that's what we're gonna be working with. We're gonna build an image like that inside Keynote. And then uh, some of the homework yesterday, if you were able to connect, was to create an image like that and then print it out so we can use it as a test. Uh, we'll also be doing a test with a book. Uh, I'm just looking around me and I don't see the book around me now, but that's fine, we'll grab a book. Uh, and we'll do the same thing with a book cover. All right, so here we are inside our scene. I'm actually gonna go back and rename this something useful. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna tap on new project and give it a better name than new project 13. We'll call it Keynote Shapes Project. Okay, cool. So I still don't have an image yet. I gotta pick my image anchor again. I'm gonna maybe move this guy a little bit around. So I just select my hexagon. I'm gonna just move that a little bit, put it in the corner of the image maybe. You can see my properties changed over here, just like they do in the horizontal anchor scene. But let's, let's create our image first. So on that piece of paper that I showed you, I had a calculator, a book, a painter's palette and then a microscope and they're in different colors. So I'm gonna actually open up Keynote. I have Keynote here. If you don't have it, you can go download it from the App Store. It's a free app from Apple. So I am gonna, this was me showing you how to print from uh, our Keynote the other day. So I've already created two. So I, I basically, I went to presentations I hit plus, you can pick any template that comes up. My presentation basic, you could even use one of these. I like using the one with the white background. So I have a very distinct background to my image. 
So I'm going to open up my presentation with my icons in it. So I have these two. If I want to create a new page, I just hit the plus button down at the bottom here. I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this, add a slide list and pick the blank one. So there's my blank one. Now I have the calculator, I have the book. Let's create the painter's palette one. So we're gonna hit the plus button to add an object to our slide. And you can see, so I have my images picked first. So I could, I could insert an image here, but I'm actually gonna pick a shape. I'm in the education section. There's a whole list of different categories of shapes that we can pick from, but I know that my artistic palette is somewhere around here. Maybe it's in the arts one. So I saw the palette up above. I don't see the brush though. Well, let's just grab, tell you what, let's grab this here. I think what I did was I had this palette and then I added in a brush as well. So I did something like this. So there's my brush. And then what you can do is change if I go over here to this, the paintbrush up top, I can tap on that and I can choose to style it, change, add some text or arrange it. I'm going to arrange it. And then I think what I did was I actually must have used this on the desktop keynote. So I was able to rotate it. Oops. So I'll tell you what, let's, Let's ditch the painter's palette because I don't have the exact shape here. Let's add the microscope. Let's go back up to plus. We won't use my shapes because I accidentally tapped that. We'll hit on the science tab. There's my microscope. I'm going to tap on that. And that's kind of handy because that is black in our image. So there we go. We have our microscope. Now, now that we have that, and we have it centered in the mid middle of our screen, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot of this page here. So I'm gonna hit the, the power button and the, the home button at the same time. Takes a screenshot and dumps it down here. If I tap on that screenshot, I can now zoom in with the edges here. I'm just grabbing these handles at the edges to crop the, the part of the image that's selected. So there's my, there's my microscope. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space around it. And I'm gonna save that to my files. So I'm gonna go down here. There's an option to save to files. If that doesn't show up for you, you might need to say edit actions. So you can add other items. So I'm gonna save to files. I was just saving that in my documents folder. Actually, what we'll do is stop for a second. We'll rename that. Because right now it's called PNG image. I don't want to call it that. We'll call it microscope. Done. Okay, cool. So we'll save this image called microscope there. And we're done. So we can go hit the done button up in the upper left-hand corner. We'll delete the screenshot because we don't need it anymore. We saved our file. Now I should have three images because I believe I did the calculator and the book already. So now that we have our image on the iPad or in digital form anyway, and I have it printed out because you know, the proof is that I showed it to you. I held it up in front of the screen. I'm going to go open up Reality Composer. And now if I tap anywhere on the grid, our inspector over here is going to change. So now I can change, I can choose my image asset that I want to anchor my reality scene to. So if I hit choose, I don't have anything right now in my content library. So I'm going to hit plus to import something. And you can see I default to my, to, to files here. So I could hit browse and go browse around and try to find my, my file that way. Um, I have, these are my, the files though, that I, these are the, the images that I wanted to anchor my scene to. So let's pick the microscope since we just created that one. I'm going to tap on it. 
And now it's inside my content library. Now I'm going to hit tap on that to have that be my image anchor. Now there's an interesting piece that we have to note here and to help out AR kit and help out the camera be able to recognize this image because there's a lot of heavy lifting that goes on from a coding perspective behind all of this. We have to tell it, hey, this is the general size of things here. Now this kills me because it's in the metric system and I'm lost when it comes to the metric system. So this is telling me that, okay, physical width of this microscope when I find it in real life is going to be 8.06 centimeters and then the physical height is going to be 9.47 centimeters. Well, that's not, not true. So uh, luckily what I've got here, I'm sitting at my son's desk. Um, I've actually got some of his math tools here. So what we would do is we would actually go and measure out. We'd say, okay, well, let's have a look. It doesn't have to be exactly right, but that's going to be not quite nine. It's going to be maybe five and a half centimeters tall by roughly four, four-ish centimeters. So let's go into that in. So the physical width we said was about four. The physical height was about, what did we say? We said it was about five and a half or six. We'll say six. Now, you can see that the physical width changed on me because what I've done in my image is I've actually got a bit of a border around it. You know, there's some white space around my image. So maybe I want to add a little bit of padding to that. So maybe it's 6.5. And I can see that it sort of handily does the math for me. It figures out that, okay, well, if the physical height is 6.5, then the width, given the width of this image, is going to be 5.53 centimeters. So that's nice that they kind of helped me out there. So let's see. So we have our, our microscope. We have no other options here to set. If I play this scene, I can sort of test it out. Okay, well, not super exciting. I'm just going to add a, this hexagon-looking shape here. What we'll do is we will have this shape go right on top of our image. So we're going to set the position to zero. In fact, it's a little bit fatter than that, so we'll raise it up a bit. Now you saw that little snap at the end. That's because I have this magnets turned on, so that's why I knew that, okay, well, I want to try to align the very bottom of this object to the plane, to the surface of the plane. All right, so now, now we have our... We have it all set up. Let's turn on AR and see what we have. Okay, cool. So we're going to move the iPad to start to get it oriented. There we go. We've moved it around. Okay, cool. Well, let's try playing this because we've just landed the, the object on top of the, the right image. Let's, let's hit play over here up in the, to, the toolbar. And let's move around again. There, and when, we, when it recognizes that microscope image, it snaps right to it. And now I can move the paper around, and I can see I've got my, my hexagon shape sticking right to my image. So let's, let's make that a little bit more interesting. So that's, you know, that's fine that we have our, we have a hexagon on top of a, a microscope. Let's, let's add a little bit of uh, life to this. So maybe we would do this if we were doing a, a science project. Um, or maybe what we're doing is this is a, an app for a school. Let's add another scene. We're going to also make it an image anchor. There. For this image asset, I'm going to choose the book one. So I'm going to take the image that I saved yesterday, book. So we would do the same thing. And I'll give you a second. If you have this open in Keynote and you manage to print it out, 
that would be great. Uh, the microscope one is a good example because it's in black and white. So if your printer happens to run out of color ink, which ours always does, you'll be all set. So now for this one, I'm going to pick the book. I'm going to change the physical width because it's definitely not that big. We'll say we'll have a guess that the width is about maybe five centimeters. Instead of this object, what we're going to do is tap on our hexagon and delete it. And imagine we have this book icon uh, at the front of our, our English classroom. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to add a sign that says welcome to English class. So I'm going to say hit the plus button and go find a sign. All right, actually, let's add a call out. So now if I tap on the call out, I can now move it around because I'm still in edit mode. We can change the scale a bit. We can make it a different type of call out, thought bubble, exclamation. We can change the material the message is written in. There's a whole bunch of options on our our bubble that we can change. I'm going to change the message. Ooh, let's see. All right, so imagine this is the name of our class is English Comp 201. We can change the font if we want. Make it a little more kind of hip and, and modern, more um, a little more interesting. We won't turn on physics on this. But maybe what we would like to do is have it face the camera. So let's add a behavior. And so we're going to hit the, the plus button here. And remember, there are loads of different types of uh, behaviors that we can add. We're going to actually, we're going to add a custom one because that way we can set our own trigger and our own action. Some of the other ones are just pre-built triggers and, and actions. So I'm going to call this behavior. I'm actually going to name it up front. Uh, so I'm going to have it called look at camera. So the trigger for this is going to be, let's see, we could do it. Let's do it at scene start. We might want to do it when the camera gets close to make sure that if somebody tries sneaking up behind the um, behind the thought bubble, it, it turns around. We're going to add an action to our action sequence. And if we go down towards the bottom, there's the look at camera option. And now we get to pick our affected object. We, well, we want the call out here to come back to us. We can pick either one of those objects, but if I, what happened was I actually tapped on the text and it says that, you know what, there's this emitted text object or the quote bubble. Well, we want both. So I actually want to try to tap on just the white there and then it selects the, the bubble for me. I'm going to hit done. We can change the duration if we want, so we could have it look at us very slowly. But let's check this out. Let's try running this in, in AR. So we're going to go hit the AR button up here. So we'll have a look at our environment. It's looking for that, that image that we had. And it's not seeing it. There we go. Okay, cool, so it's placed it. Now let's try playing this to see how it would play out. Okay, now the problem is that it only faces me at the very start of when it finds it. So let's see if we... See if we can detect that again. Oh, there we go. So maybe we do, we want to have it face the camera when we get close to it. So let's 
try adding that behavior. So we're going to hit stop. Now, right now the trigger is at scene start. We're going to look at the camera, which I, I like that behavior. So let's leave that one there. Let's add a new behavior by hitting the plus button on behaviors. I'm going to scroll down and do custom. Now we'll call this one, maybe we'll call this follow the camera. Because it won't just be on scene start, this will be when we get close. So the trigger here, we'll tap on that to pick proximity to camera. So now I'm not going too far because I've got a cable attaching me to the laptop so we can broadcast this thing. A meter will basically mean that I'm always within proximity of the, the image anchor. But now I need to pick a, an affected object. So I will pick the, the text bubble as the thing that's close to me. Maybe I'll even move that down a little, well, we'll move it down just a little bit. And then we're going to add an action to the sequence. So what we'll do is we'll have it look at the camera. So just like before, maybe we'll do it a little bit slower. And we'll just verify that that's our selected object. Yep, our, our speech bubble is green. Let's try playing this and see what happens. Alright, so right now we're off kind of floating in space. Let's reset it by looking out the window. Oh, there we go. All right, well, it's not quite working as expected, is it? It's not really following us. But we do have our Welcome to English Comp speech bubble coming out of the, the green book. Not too bad. So that way we can then switch. We can say, all right, cool. Well, that's, that's our English class. We also have our, whoops, didn't mean to tap that. If we tap back into our project, if we tap this thing here to pick a different scene, I'll pick our chemistry scene and we'll get rid of this object. Because maybe this is something that they would, they installed at your school for uh, an open night. So let's see, what will we add for our chemistry? We'll hit the plus button and we'll see if there's any good Maybe we're talking about the, maybe we'll do some technology stuff. Maybe we'll work with our floppy disk. So we'll have that show up. So when that downloads, what we'll do is we'll have, when we get to the, the science lab, say they've got computers set up that day, we'll, we'll um, show off a floppy disk to tell people what it is we're working on this particular day. Okay, cool. Let's make it a bit more realistic. There we go. Or actually, should we maybe spin that guy around? Maybe not that way. We'll spin it this way. Okay, cool. So we flipped our, our floppy disk upside down. And we'll have that float a little bit above our, our microscope. So I'm going to go back to AR. And you can see when it finds the, the image, it drops our floppy disk right on top of our microscope. And then we could even walk around with this thing. Now I'm not even playing it at this stage, so we can still move around our floppy disk and make sure it lands the way we want it to on our, on our microscope. Maybe we want to flip this thing around. 
Maybe we want to rotate it 180 this way. Bring it down a bit. I'm making a huge mess out of it. So let's turn off AR for a second. And let's move this guy back down here. We'll reset this to zero. And we'll reset the position a little bit. There, now it looks like we're directly in the middle, like intersecting the, the microscope. Cool. All right. Well, let's let's go back to AR. There we are. We're intersecting our microscope. I'm going to hit play so that it sets it there a bit more permanently. Oh. Not too bad. Now, it's going to be particularly good with these images because they are very simple. They're very easy for AR kit to pick out. What we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to actually take a picture of a real life object, a book, um, and recognize that in our scene and maybe add some extra details about the particular book. Uh, this might be a cool way to do a, a book report project if you're doing it in class to show this to the teacher, um, have the book report actually come out of the actual book. Uh, but that's something we're going to play around with tomorrow. Um, I encourage you to keep going with this a little bit, make some more shapes in Keynote, print it out, um, and then try adding a few more scenes so that if you imagine here, uh, this was done as like a little prototype for, for teachers. Um, you can very quickly add things like, okay, cool, we've got our math image here that we want to display something over. We want to show off something we've done with our, our books. And what we're going to do tomorrow is work through the same kind of exercise, but with a book cover. And then next week, we might try to build a prototype of a newspaper like the Daily Prophet that appears in, in uh, Harry Potter. You know, the, the one where the, the images in the newspaper actually move when you take a look at them. That's an ambitious project. We'll try to see how far we get next week. Um, but tomorrow we'll start a little bit easier with taking a picture with our iPad of a book cover, importing it into Reality Composer, and then using that as our image anchor and maybe adding some information and, and uh, writing a bit of extra info about this particular book that we pick. All right. I hope you enjoyed today. I think the image anchor stuff is, is so amazing and there's so much stuff we can do with it. Um, we're going to keep playing with that tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us a line at live at the codehub.ie. Um, we'll see you tomorrow.